Easter deal. We got an Easter East. I'm, I'm extra it out. East episode. <laughs> yeah. Cartoon one, man. Original gangster, East Side Avalon, 53rd Street. Welcome to Facts Over Fillers, the podcast. What's up, homie? Man, I appreciate your presence, man. It's long overdue. Let me give you one of these. As we had the table, he had stopped me because I used to slam on the table. He told me to stop reaching across, but I guess that won't create no sound. Right, right. I got to get, yeah, 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 man. Much presence, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm very humble and um, appreciative to have you here today, man. So much to talk about. Um, whether you know it or not, you inspire me a lot. Um, the way you um, just come online, establish your presence, and just being yourself and in itself, the fact that your generation doesn't necessarily take up the trade that you've taken up, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? For real. Um, and you've done it, controversy, ups and downs, no gimmicks. And I watch your platform from day one. You've never had a struggle in this. Um, I want to salute you for your establishment, your progress, and who you created yourself to be online. But we know out here from the culture, it didn't start online. Right. And I think that's why it's so easy. Well, not easy. I think that's why you were so successful when you stepped out here is because as everybody checked all the facts, and you ain't no youngster, it go way back as to official concrete. And I can say that and put all, everything that, you know, I represent out here as a native, as a generation under yours, maybe two. Um, I know what it come back as. And I think that helped your authentic, authenticity help lead to your success. I just want to know if you agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Say less. Um, um, shout out to Big Ron Ron from 6 one of my most prestigious OG Crips that was oh, here man. on God. He spoke yeah. highly of you. He said y'all did some time as young men. Yeah. Yeah, he speak very highly of you. Um, I, one thing that strikes me about your presentation online is gangsters, you keep it, and all that. You've committed yourself not to using profanity. And um, I admire that just for having, because sometimes I've seen you get extremely upset. My grandmother was the only person that I knew who committed themselves to not cursing, and I never heard them slip up. She would replace the words, I'll be John Brown. And you knew she wanted to cuss, but that's right, what she right. would say. And instead of shit, it was shucks. And she didn't say ass, she say buttocks, uh -huh. posterior. She yeah. just didn't do it. What, how, from what, cause everything we learn about you is easty, gutter, gangster. Where did you get this motivation to be clean with your speech and how do you manage it so well? To be 100% honest with you, homie, when I, when I first started going to prison, uh, back when I was going, when you first come through the door, the first thing the homies was going to do is get that N-word out your vocabulary. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So once you got, once you stop saying the N-word, the, they was going to work on stop saying the, the B-I-T-C-H. Mm. And, you know, at first I used to wonder, like, well, you know, why we can't say that? And the homies were like, well, look, homie, you know, nine times out of ten when you're using that word toward a female, you're speaking on a black woman. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, homie, that's when I... You know, you learn, you you grow up mentally a lot when you go to prison. And they, I'm like, okay. And they like, well, man, listen, man, if it wasn't for our sisters, where would we be? Mm. You know, black, you know, black women, some of the strongest women on the face of the planet, you know, with all, all the adversity they went through and we going to turn around and just call them that. I'm like, all right, homie, I got you. So once I stopped using those two, I'm like, all right, time going on, time going on. One day, it, you know, it, like, I'm like, what? I don't need to use it at all. Mm. And so, but now to be 100% honest with you, to keep it with, keep it uh, buck with the man up above, I started getting into the Bible. I started getting into the word. Mm. And um, I say, well, look, I can't be true to what I feel about Jesus Christ if I'm cussing. Mm. So one day, man, I ain't gonna even lie, man. It took me, I, man, I got on my knees and I prayed. I say, God, man, I don't wanna use that type of language no more. You know, I don't, I don't wanna use it. And it, bang, I'm talking about a lot of people like, man, come on to it. And I'm like, man, he took it from me just like that. Mm. And that was like over 30 years ago and it just stopped. I'm like, it That's damn. deep. Um, I had no idea that I was going to be motivated or behooved to share this experience. And I use the word behoove intentionally because I hear so many of our people use it online out of context. Yeah, they, yeah. Like, I'm behooved. And they, but I'm behooved to share this experience. One of my dearest friends since I was a, a teen is a pastor, Pastor Stephen Lewis, a bishop. He passed last year due to cancer. And his funeral was in Huntsville, Alabama, and I attended. I don't attend 
many funerals. He was a mentor of mine at a time of my life where people that reared me and raised me thought that I should become a minister. And I was even uh, uh, trying to, you know, uh, figure that out at one point in my life. But I remember in years of like the 20, um, 20s, it could have been 18, 19, or could have been 2020. Mm -hmm. We stayed fluent until he passed, but we were talking one day and we was just talking about something to a point where I cussed and he was like, and I apologized. And immediately he was like, ah, oh, man, don't worry about that. You know where the word fuck came from? And he gave me this whole breakdown of the history of the word fuck mm -hmm. and shit. And he just like made it not a moral issue. And he is a very revered minister. And it's just deep that I know that a lot of things that we attach to our morality and our spirituality is based upon programming. And me as an individual, I've been had this mind without nobody teaching me this. The language that we are lining up with the creator's interest in us was created by humans. Mm -hmm. So this is what we're giving humans the power to do. We're going to create this word. And until we say it means this, it means nothing. Right. And now that we establish it means this, you have a relationship with your creator based on how you use it. Has nothing to do with what I talk. What I want to talk about. So let's not get on that. But I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I can't believe you brought that up. This is what I want to do since we are talking about conversation and words. I think I owe an apology that I extended in general to your section, but I don't think it was really caught in the um, way that I intended. Um, a couple months ago, and me and you knowing each other for a few years through online, we've met in person before mm -hmm. today, but our whole relationship was based online and we realized we had a lot of mutual acquaintances. And I know a lot of people don't realize, even though our set's not enemies, they're not allies. And it's a relationship that had, you know, us not be mature in these times. It can be tricky through times. Right, right. That's and right. we respected it from day one and we've been cool. And then shout out to Munchie B, one of the most, um, viral clips in our culture recently was about gang bang etiquette and how you mm -hmm. speak with him and Naomi from Santana had their exchange. And I kind of, it puts me in the mind frame of me being on live recently, loaded, feeling myself slide through the east side and I used some verbiage that was disrespectful towards your section. I know you wasn't, um, you didn't know about it, but you called me like, cuz, man, my homie's getting at me cuz. And man, you talk so often and it's so agreeable. When you call me with this tone of voice, I'm like, damn. Who could You remember you were just talk, was talking to me about 30 minutes prior. Yeah, and everything yeah. was how it always yeah. it's all, it was how it always was. Yeah. So when you call me back with the intensity in your voice, and you're like, man, my homies call me, they say, man, you must have said woo woo. I'm thinking in my head, I knew what I said immediately. And I'm like, damn, Avalon Gangsters getting that tune about what I said. And my brain just immediately realized the amount of people it could be getting at you that I don't have a personal rapport with and that might really be confused about what I said. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, man, I do my best to be careful online and speak how I know I'm supposed to speak. I said some bullshit, totally unintentional. I corrected it immediately, but I'm so loaded. I, when I go watch it back, right after I corrected it, I said the bullshit again. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I double, I, I corrected I it, that. got humble, got loaded, <laughs> and I said it again. So um, I'm like, damn, you like, man, Spider, let me just, you like, I'm, a, I'm and I, all I want to know is who, who, which one of your homies? And I just, because the world has no idea. <laughs> they have a shout out to my nigga Lil Shug from 88th Street, yeah. from the guards for the projects. When you said the name, you don't know, like, the level of like, damn, what kind of, how I'm gonna have to like, and when you said who it was, I don't think you realize, you see how extra out I got. I knew it was no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like what you didn't know at that moment, you know now, what a lot of people don't know, fuck what y'all think about the set and the Avalons, should raise the whole lot of my cripping. And that's based on his relationship with my big brother, uh -huh. big SPI, free TC from 8-8. Got a real controversial situation online right now. These are like peers of mine since youth, and even though in general you might think that it's tension between the 90s and the 80s because of the EC Avalon shit, in the 80s and the 90s it never really has been how they do to my brother's relationship with Snake, rest in peace, and Suge, 
my nigga Dice, rest in peace, and a lot of other niggas from A8, TCs. It's a whole lot of people they grew up with. At one point, my first brother first jumped off the porch based on his fucking with Snake. If it, 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 niggas thought he would might have been from Avalon first, mm-hmm. so it was never my intention to be disrespectful, but it just reminded me of the Munchie B, <clears throat> Busy Santana incident where nobody really has ill intentions, but somebody says something that could offend another person, and you get to the point where <clears throat> when it was brought to my attention, I was immediately humble, expressed my intentions, and in my assessment, I think BZ was immediately humble as well. But a lot of people don't think he was. They think he was still, have you, you saw the content? I've seen it and it, it, it depends on the mind frame you from. Cause you got some people when, 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 when it, when it went and then even though, even after he had got confronted by Munchie, you know, a lot of people look at it as like, you know, man, the homie still stood up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, whoop, you know it's, you know, at their age, it's a pride thing, mm-hmm. cause now it's like, okay, now you trying to punk me on camera, you know, you trying to, you not, you trying to push a line on me, on this camera, and everybody gonna see. So even if it ain't in my heart, to like, rawr, I got to now, you know. I agree with so, that. You know, it's, it's just one of them situations. And a lot of people thought I was biased because I didn't take Munchie's side, but I didn't even take Busy's side either. I'm not saying Munchie wrong or busy wrong. I understand the culture. I understand where shit went wrong. I see points where either of them could have did different and perhaps diffused it. But I know when it come to game man, a crip and a blood, at that moment, once certain energy is changed, it's up to both sides to say if they, there's no right and wrong after we engage at a certain energy. Your thoughts? You know, me and, me and Munchie just talked yesterday. We, I, I was in Darby Park with him and we was talking. And um, I said, well, you know, homie, I'm going to go ahead and address the elephant in the room, that situation. And so what a lot of people don't know, hours and hours prior to that incident, um, Munchie and and, and and the rest of the Damus and and uh, the homie from Santana, Easy. they was around each other and, you know, be, you know, speaking. How blah, blah, blah. And Munchie had been, he had asked him hours prior to that, you know, okay, you ain't got to. It's cool, I understand, but you don't have to cuz me so much. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I'm still a blood, you know? And, um, you know, the, the homie from Santana had agreed, like, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. But now, when I was talking to Munchie, I, you know, I explained to him, I'm like, man, you still got to realize we, you grew up as a Damu. We grew up as Kiways. From this all the way to this, this is our vocab, you know what I'm saying? It's like saying, what's up, homie? What's up, man? You know what I'm saying? Or the, the N-word, or what's up, N, or whatever. And if you engaged in a fluent, going, running conversation, you are going to say your word. It, it, it's, it's, you know, you cannot stop it. You don't know. You, half the time, you don't even know it's coming out, you know? Um, I, I, it's like talking to uh, Bosco 100. He's going to blood you every third word. Mm-hmm. And it ain't, it's not, it's not men as disrespect, but it's, you know, it's this is this is you know where we grew up at. This is our culture, our society. This is our upbringing, and it is. And so when it happened again, you know, I guess it got to the point where Munchie was just kind of like fed up with it. And like he said, well, who caused me? Who co-? you know he can't see, so he's like, who caused me? So then, like, oh boy, you know what I'm saying me. You know, woo 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 Santana. You know what I'm saying? What's the homie name? Beezy. Beezy. Beezy Santana. You know what I'm saying? So I guess, you know, at that time, it's like, okay, now we on camera, we on air, and here it is. I'm a blood, 50 million bloods watching this, and you, you know, here, you hit me with it. You hit me with it. And so, like I was telling them yesterday, I said, that's kind of like the same situation when um, T-Rail interviewed Baby Stone Gorillas about that. And I told him, I don't use the word. I just spell it. That C-R- C-R-A-B word. You called me about that. I did, huh? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, um... You know when he when he when he interviewed him and he was skinning and grinning and but he, and much he even understood much he said yeah that was kind of sad. he said man even he felt uh like uh T Rail was laughing and joking about it. he said it it wasn't that ain't nothing funny you know what I'm saying it was for you to bring it up right yeah, that's what he told me say man. you know he the one brought it up yeah and if you now, chose if to I'm bring it up when you a uh, uh, uh you I'm not you know a hey, I'm a, I'm a journalist when I'm behind this camera. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I understand this certain stuff I got to accept. 
But that I'm not though. You know what I'm saying? Stop, hey, stop, stop, homie. Hey, that's what we're not gonna do. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna sit here and use C R A B or S L O B and none of that. You know what I'm saying? No, none of that. It ain't funny. It ain't. I don't care because you put in your music and none of that. No, homie, we ain't finna do that because at the end of the day, I'm still a crib. Oh God, oh my mama, mama, it, words of disrespect. And as I discussed this conversation, like in the comments, I made that comparison. It's different if somebody said rap, lob, that's go without. But like you say, as we are amongst each other, we don't use the word cuz as a disrespect ever. It's always a term of endearment. Right, right. So if I'm accepting you in a level of comfort and I use that term, it's like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. So it may offend you, but I think being offended by it is more of a personal thing than what you can expect each individual you encounter from the opposite side to agree with. And I think tone of voice had a lot to do with it. Exactly, it's, it's the, the, energy, the energy that you put in to the to your comeback. Yeah, that's why I couldn't make no judge. It's game. Right, right. Game. We when see, I see like, go up over way smaller than way that. Smaller than that. Yeah. And, and for those who don't know, Munchie B is a genuinely good dude, man. Solid. Yeah, he really is. Solid. He's a genuinely good dude, man. It's just, you know, that was just that was just one of them things. Yeah, it was a moment. You know? It was yeah, just a moments. moment. And I was just curious to get your thoughts on that. Because I know Munchie B, he was very limited on his discussion of the incident. Mm -hmm. And when he did choose to speak with a crip, he chose the homie Hoodie from San Diego. And I think, um, I don't know if that was strategic or just happenstance, but Hoodie's experience being from Dago, I don't know if they beef with any crips whatsoever. No. So I, yeah, and I think it's more like CKBK. That's the way it go. Mm -hmm. And I think his perspective on it is going to be a lot more pure about just blood and cuz. So... Um, out here, we know, even though the Hoovers put a brand on it, everybody's we gave it. it ain't, we might not bang it, but on a lot of songs on the East Side, my whole experience, my directs, it was more grip than homies. Right. I mean, it was more crips than ops. And when I look at the overall subject, this is the main thing I take away from it. You could be from neighborhood. And if you got a homie from Hoover, a loved one, no matter how many times they groove you, you don't get offended. Right. It's and, the, you know what? It's the the LA demographics. This is like when me and Munch was talking, and um, I had a coming to I we because I, I interviewed in in Darby Park, and um, I had a partner. You keep saying that it like was, that's a, I get to the, to those who don't realize for a crip, that's being that's being somewhere. And I know it was out of respect where and reception, <laughs> but it's not where you're supposed to go. And I can relate because, uh, shout out to Curvell, my youngest son, he's 15, but he grew up my whole life playing um, sports at Darby and Rogers. So I spent quite a few weekends and weekdays up there. And I know the environment you describe it. So I want to um, thank to all the Inglewood natives that made that, you know, easty for us. Go ahead. But, uh, I had a partner from 6 0 that was supposed to go with me and meet me up there. And um he was like, I said, he said, Well, where we gonna go? I said, Well, uh, we gonna go to uh, we going to Darby Park. He was like, No, I'm not going. I said, Man, it's much, man. You know, if he if it is it's all he say, homie, listen. He say at the end of the day, he said, Man, I'm out the in hood car. He say, You can go because you out the gangster car. And the relationship with the gangsters and the and 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 the in the families, he said, matter of fact, no. The relationship with the gangsters and bloods, period, is totally different. You know that. Than the relationship with them, with the bloods and the in hoods. And so we was going through it, and it's like, and I'm like, oh, because when I was in the pen, you know what I'm saying, the, the Sioux Whoop moving and groove, yeah. and I'd heard about it, and the apples, oranges, and grapes, or how, however they go, I'd heard about it that I did, but I didn't really, really know what it was. Much explained it to me. And I said, okay, the way LA really is now. Cause you know I was going to Alabama, you know, twenty three straight, you know, and so I say, okay, really, what the the what the gang stuff going on in LA is now? It's basically like the gangsters and the bloods against the in hoods. Mm. And I said, oh, so that's how it goes. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I said, all right. So so so, I I, I was trying to send you some content, and I think I kind of um, lost train of thought. 
you said the gangsters in the end, but I'm gonna send you this. I want you to look at your phone in a few seconds before we get to that though. Um, I wanna know, being such an original OG native out here and the internet, most homies from my section, yo age, yo generation, I try to invite on these platforms, they, they don't want no parts of it. So what gave you the desire, the, the, the confidence, the motivation to be out here and saying, I don't give a fuck what's normal for my generation. I'm out here putting it down, sharing my experiences, keeping it gangster online. Where did you find the desire? Did you ever see yourself behind a microphone outside of doing this? No, I mean, um, I'd heard of YouTube before. You know, when I was in the pen, I heard, you know, everybody heard of YouTube. But now when I got out, um, something that happened. I don't know. I'm sitting there looking at TV one day, going through the, going through the channels, going through the channels, and um, I run across Kev Mag. Shout out Kev Mag, uh, night bud. Mm -hmm. And so I go to watch him. You know, it's going You know, it's gonna catch my attention because he's talking about so much LA stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, so I'm listening. I'm listening. So okay, when that went off, I'm just going through YouTube. You in, Alab you in Alabama at the time? No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in Alabama. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going through YouTube and it's like a person told me anything. If you can't find it on YouTube, it's cause it ain't never happened. I'm like what? He said, like, man, you just type it in and YouTube gonna have something somewhere on it. And I'm just, I man, I'm typing in all type of elephants with wings and a purple nose. Oh shoot, they got them. You know, you know weird stuff. And it's on there. So now I'm stuck <laughs> looking at YouTube all day. I literally wore a hole in the carpet because I just sit on the floor with my back up against the couch watching YouTube. My wife used to get mad at me. Man, you are you, all you that they YouTube? Call that, they call that the wormhole. Okay. You fell down that wormhole. I fell down that wormhole, mm -hmm. homie. Mm -hmm. And I'm stuck. I'm talking about from the time I woke up to the time. I'm at YouTube. I'm talking about eyes this big, man. <laughs> Comedy just, I'm talking about all type of stuff. Anything you could think Anything of. Anything you could think of. And so I'm like, all right, you know, boom. What got me into it was um, the Dewberry situation. Mm. And um, I'm sitting there looking at YouTube one day. Of course, you know, Charles White on there acting a fool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm killed. Like, man, man, disrespecting the set, disrespecting the city. That's, you know, Crips. Mm, so I'm said, looking. You said that my next question up so beautifully. Go ahead, keep it going. Yeah, so um, I'm like, I said, man, I want to say something. What pissed me off was when Mob James got into with uh Charleston and they jumped up like they gonna fight and Dewberry just sitting there. But then the next day, Charleston and Dewberry in the park and Dewberry front like he was finna go all in with him and I'm like, oh man. So I want, you know, I, I made I made it, I said what I said, I said, man, you know, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how to put it on. So I go to I go to my homie in uh Colorado, uh Von Lowe. I'm like, cuz upload this for me, homie. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I was on that fool. You ain't this, I'm on, you know. And it went back and forth a couple of times. And then Vonnie was putting it up too slow. I wanted it up. <laughs> so my homie Chaos got at me. I got, and he was like, cuz, man, you need to go and do your own thing and you can upload yourself. I'm like, I don't know how to do none of that. He like, homie, I got you. So the homie Chaos, he hooked it up and I said a little something and uploaded. I'm like, dang, I look up a couple of views and this stuff. I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> you, you, I got bit. I bit the apple. I was hooked. <laughs> And so he like, cuz, you need to just go ahead and just do your thing. You know what I'm saying? And I start going and going and going. I'm like, oh, shoot. All right. And at the time, my wife, she's still on my head about it. But if, as the months went by and I finally was able to get monetized and she seen two, three pennies coming in, I said, baby, now what? <laughs> oh, I ain't got nothing to say. Yeah, I ain't got, she ain't got nothing to say now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you want to go on a trip? To, uh, she just she just left a trip in uh, Mexico on a cruise. Mm. I paid for it. You want you want a car? You want some clothes? You want this and that? YouTube paying for that, you know. <laughs> so now she ain't got nothing to say about it. She matter of fact, right. if I don't make a video, she even inquire, baby, you make a video mm. today. Salute. You know. Salute. I'm like, no, Salute. you need to make a video. I'm like, I got you. Salute. That's hard. That's hard. Now you briefly touched on Dewberry and all that, and I'm gonna bring this up, but for the audience, this is not the first time I'm bringing this up toward him. Um, there was a time, now I've never given this much of a backstory, but there was a time when Dewberry and his little partner was coming in to your area of the South that you preside in, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And shortly before they got there, you and I spoke about it. The whole world saw what you saw. Everybody saw the exchange that you had 
based on these two names. Uh, a lot of my G homies, I did not realize at the moment was in the cut, rooting for you, proud of you, glad that you were saying everything you were saying for the simple fact Nip, my generation, we was appreciating you because Cuz spoke so disrespectfully toward neighborhood Nip. But when he spoke on Raymond Washington, it was so disrespectful. A lot of people from your generation were so proud of you standing in the gap, making it seem like had these individuals crossed your path, they was going to have problems. And then they came out there to the place. There was some footage where it seemed like you encountered either both or one of them and nothing went up. And without me even being really aware of it, I got calls mm -hmm. from niggas from my section and your generation that I didn't even know was aware of your presence online. Like, what up with your, don't you fuck with wooty woo? Why he wooty wooty woo? Mm -hmm. So I called you, I'm like, mm -hmm. they wooty woo. Please give us your thoughts on Bro. what you just told us, one of your, one of your men. Um, I spoke on it a few times. I, me and you spoke on it, but. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, what it was, as far as Charleston White went, I ain't gonna even lie. As far as he went, I, I, I you know, boom. My issue was with Dewberry. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And um, cause I just, you know, you, 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 you so fake it. Whatever you had with Dewberry in your personal perspective was more offensive than Charleston White being extremely disrespectful to Raymond Washington and then Nipsey. Dewberry was more of an issue. I, I, you know, um, yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? I can't sugarcoat it. I really I really wanted to get at Dewberry for some of the stuff that he was saying. Charleston White, he had been offended people for so long, but now it ain't like, you know, I, I didn't like him, period. You know what I'm saying? Um, neither. But what it was, okay, prior to him coming to Alabama, somebody had got at me like, man, Tom, man, uh, you know Charleston White and Dewberry, they finna come to Alabama. To the comedy thing, I'm like, where they going? So when they said where they going, it was almost walking distance mm. from, you know what I'm saying? You know, you jump in the car, four minutes, I'm at the comedy club where they was going. So I'm like, all right, well, cool. But now, when it happened, before it even, before they even came there, I pretty much had already was like through with them. I had, been, prior to them, I got into it with the boy out of Atlanta. Then I got into it with the boy G-Face. We squashed it, we cleared it up, found out what the problem was. And so months and months and months, a few months go by, I'm like, I mean, I'm through with all that. I, I, I was telling people, I am not finna be on this internet going back and forth with people. Ah, yeah, 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 I, I just don't wanna do that one. Mm -hmm. But now y'all done came to me. I said, I'm going. When I went, we went about 2021 20, deep. Yep, yep. Hold that thought, cause mm -hmm. this is where I, I got the call. We, our casual conversations, normal energy, Whoa, the boy coming. It was a few days to a week ahead. Mm -hmm. why, why, immediately, I went into concern for you. Because I just thought immediately you meant it's on. I said, hold up, cuz. Don't go up there and do nothing. I thought you immediately was going to try to go run a play. So I'm like, man, you ain't got no torpedoes or nothing. Ooh, what, what? At a gang on. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, okay, I'm glad you was comfortable saying that. Your response to me was, oh, yeah. I ain't fin I got you. So I thought, okay, the big homie gonna be careful about himself personally, but he gonna make a play. It's gonna be a demo. But go ahead and pick up to where you was at. So um, when I, I you know I got at the homies, they were like, well, you know, cause we going with you, we going with you, we gonna do. And they 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 was like, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? I said, no, cause y'all ain't finna do nothing. I said, I'm not going up there for this. I say, if I was, I said, I kill my own snakes, homie. I say, if 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 it come down to violence. I whooped both of them by myself. I said, I don't need all y'all. I said, but y'all, you know, y'all come on. Where they was coming, you know what I'm saying? A couple of my partners, they worked there. So I was able, to, if I wanted to get in with a gun, anything, straight to the back if I wanted to. But now, like I say, I wasn't going there with that intention. Now, my intention was, Dewberry, you got to apologize to me for what you said about my mama. My mama dead. Mm. So, you know, I go up, when we get there, I go back. Shout out Jay Diggs. They was um in the back. So I come in the back, I look. I'm see Charleston and some women, they rolling up. You, well, anyway, they in, the, they in the back. So when I turn around, Dewberry standing in back of me. Hmm. So when I look at him, I say, well, well, well. He say, well, well, well. Hmm. I say, look, homie, let's go down the hallway. I need to holler at you. Hmm. He's like, all right, come on. We got that's a female right there. I said, look, could you step out? So me and then she stepped out. So I say, look, I ain't here to do nothing to you. I, mean, I say, but now you said something about my mama. I say, I, I need apology for that one. I need that. 
I don't remember mind if he wasn't gonna give me the apology, I was gonna I was gonna you know what I'm saying I was gonna get directly at him. But now when I said it, he off, off the rip. He was like, man, you know what, Tune, you right, man. Uh, I apologize for that. You know, I, I seen I a dude Barry that. online. He strikes me as an individual that would not have you know robbed you of that if you if that's how you approach no, him. No, no, he he he's not like that. He mm -hmm. wasn't like that. You know, he he just wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. So he apologized when he apologized. Me personally, I turned around. And told him I say, homie, you know, I said some stuff to you. I'm gonna apologize for that too. If you since you you gave me mine, I'm gonna give you yours. Mm. Cool. Now on the footage, and I I put that footage up, but now on the no, I didn't. I didn't put that one. Mm. I put the footage up when we were standing back there. Mm. But now when we walked out, we went into the other room. Charles White was on there on live. So immediately when they see me, him, all of us standing there, you know what I'm saying? I'm a jovial person off the rip. I'm <laughs> anybody know me, that's me. So when I come in, it, it you know, it'll give you the impression that we we kicking it, we finna be cool. And then Charles to go to run in his mouth. Like we finna, you know, start doing podcasting together and we finna, we finna go on tour. I'm like, that's him talking. Once I got my apology, I had no intention on ever seeing y'all again. I never did see me. I didn't even stay for the show or none of that. I came to get what I got and I was gone. But now a lot of people like, man, I should have, I should have got him. I should have did this. Okay, maybe, maybe a lot of people feel I should have. One of the things at the time, I ain't finna, I, you can't put a steering wheel in my back, homie. Mm -hmm. I'm not finna crash out for nobody. A lot of people don't know, at that time, I was still on parole. Mm -hmm. 50 million police there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to jail. No, at, how, how much how much accumulative time have you done in your lifespan, sir? Uh, I was I, behind bars right at uh, between 39 and a half, 40 years. Keep talking, all and right. And I was not finna Keep crash talking. out. Make it e make sense. Yeah, e and e if, I want, if I was there to do something to him, even if I could have backed up and had the little homies do but it. But even if that's what you was thinking to the moment you saw him, you became wise at the... No, I was wise it, before it, we went there. But, that's, but, that's but, but, I already but, knew but, I wasn't But, do but had you been on a crash course mm -hmm. and you never did something, you finally made a... No matter when you decided, you did the wise thing, basically. Oh, yeah. yeah keep yeah, yeah, keep yeah, it going, yeah. though. Yeah, most, most, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? I got something to think with. My mama ain't never raised no fools. Like I say, if I was going there for that... We wouldn't even win it. We just sat in the parking lot and wait till the show was over, wait till they leave. I could have put them youngsters on them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, cuz that's the car they in, all right. And lit it up on the freeway, the highway, the street, or just packed them out or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I, but I, it, it wasn't on that one. I'm so tell me this, the way that you chose to handle the whole overall situation and you leave it at that, does you still, do you still maintain some level of disdain for him? Based on things he said, but you just not willing. Once he apologized to me, homie, for my now, mama, no, I was good with it. I'm talking about the little nigga, cause Dewberry oh, really I don't pay no attention to Charles. Man, Charles, cause you know, I'm, cause he's I'm, a clown. I'm, I'm, I ain't gonna lie. This is at this moment, I'm speaking on behalf of people I respect. Similarly, I respect you in your age bracket on this creeping shit, cause they whole issue with dude is, cause nobody can deny the brilliance that is attached to him to some degree. But he's made some very derogatory, disrespectful say, statements about certain individuals that certain people refuse to get be behind. Are you saying that the whole Raymond Washington shit is you don't give a fuck about that? Um, I, I care about Raymond. I mean, you know, that's the that's that's the, the beginning and the end. You feel what I'm saying? But uh enough to crash out and go back to prison for it. Say I less. wasn't finna do that. Makes sense. I wasn't finna do it. I don't care what nobody say. And it ain't like I call flack for my homies. I knew I was gonna catch flack. I called flack for my homies. They were like, dang, cuz I say, man, look, this little one-eyed fool goes everywhere. And he and ain't nobody put no hands on him, period yet. Don't wait till he fall in my lap my and homies, want me to do it. One of my homies done got caught on camera being very comfortable and friendly with him that, you know, it wasn't appreciated by the section yeah. either or people in general. But, you know, it is what it is, dude is a little bigger than normal, bigger than life. We know he throws around threats of dealing with them people and all that. Right. It's one thing to not attack him. I think it's a whole nother thing to f engage him friendly. Right. And all that. And that's the things. only, that's the only thing. Like, it's a lot, it's a lot that go on behind scenes. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know, like, you see a lot of stuff on, 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 on YouTube with with you know homies in LA going back and forth doing this and this. If I wanted to, I can't do that. Not my set don't play that. Even though I'm on the YouTube and I'm a general for my section, homie, I'm even my, you know my word is law. That don't mean nothing. And I still I'm still up under the protocol. 
I can I, I can man, I can attest to this you know, by experience. When just when when the big homie first put his feet down online, one of the first people he bumped heads with was me, and um, he was speaking, in my opinion, in my assessment, carelessly about my name and associated with what another nigga said. He was just engaging com comments. I didn't appreciate him, but I didn't make videos in response. I got in his comments and started yeah. trolling him, and he was new to this shit. He would read my comments and then respond with a video. And it began to escalate. And me just could realize what he represented, his authenticity. I chose to like, instead of engaging him online, let me tap into the back channels, have a real man to man, east side, crip conversation. And it only took a matter of moments. And he and I have been like, ever since, it wasn't nothing, it was nothing. So I can attest to the fact that you started off one way on this shit, then, based on what you learned, I've watched you, and you've told me you be so many times you've got involved in controversial conversations when it was bi coastal or a different area code. You be and then it be certain shit that burn you, and you'll call me like, "Cuz I just ain't with no LA on LA shit." Yeah, so right, the that's same way I, you, yeah, the I discipline you stick to with the cussing, you stick to that issue. So I, when he said that, he not faking, y'all. Right. I, I I take a loss. I take a loss. Before I, before I get on here and make my set look bad or before I just, you know, be going back and forth with our homies that's from L.A., you know what I'm saying? Oh, from, from, from you know, from our, you know, from, from Cali. Me too. Now, I will, I, if, if a person in other states say something that I feel like, I, you know, her, but at the end of the day, homie, I'm a West Coast all-star. I love my people, you know, blue, red, don't make no difference. I'm Likewise. me. I am not finna go at, I'm not finna go back and forth with nobody from Cali. You know, if they saying something, Boom, because like I say, in my set, if I get on here and 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 say some gang goofy stuff, and so I'm finna get a phone call. Mm -hmm. Whether they little homies, big homies, homies from my generation, they fit. I'm finna get a call like Tune Cub, man. We seen what's up, woo 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 woo. And I'm like, oh man, but yeah, Cub, that ain't cool. Bet it up. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I say, cause I come back, even though I live in Alabama, I come back two, three times a year. I gotta ask you about this, bro. So when 600 popped up in your set doing videos about yeah. boxing matches and seemingly being antagonistic, did you get any phone calls about that? Did that cause? What? <laughs> what? Man, cuz. Man, he was barely out the set. Man, they were blowing my the tune cup, man, this fool over here, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm like, hold up. And they getting at me. And I don't even, I hadn't seen the video yet. I don't know nothing about it yet. I'm like, hold up, cuz, what you talking about? Man, this fool from 6 0 cuz, he over here in the set, man, talk, make a video, man, cuz, man, look, we woo woo. And, the, and they thing is, look, you doing YouTube, you on the internet, we not, we ain't got nothing to do with that internet mess, cuz, that's your stuff. Don't let what you have going on bleed over into what we doing in these streets. And I understand that 100%. I'm saying, cuz, I don't know nothing about it. I call 600, I'm like, what you doing? The thing is, what a lot of people don't know, he had called me three times prior to going over there. I didn't answer the phone, and I seen the calls, mm. but I didn't answer the phone because I didn't know the number. And was, maybe that's when he had the two numbers. Just with, yeah, I remember. Oh, you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And if, mm. I don't, if I don't know your number, I'm not finna answer the phone. And he was calling me to ask me, was this cool? And if, if I would have answered it, I, no, cuz don't do that one, homie. You know what I'm saying? We doing some internet Boxing. If we're gonna do that, let's up. pull up together. Pull up together. Yes. And, or you know what I'm saying? Like I said, but he tried to follow protocol and get the permission. And even though, you know, even though you know he you know he's from LA, I'ma just say it. The homie doesn't really know gang protocol as well as some of us do, you know. Cause you know, if somebody who really, really knows it wouldn't have never even done that. Even if he had permission, would not have Based done that. Based on current Temperatures with certain sexes. Right, like, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so when he did it, but now, for those who don't know, he didn't mean no disrespect. At all. At all, you know what I'm saying? He's not like that. I genuinely like the dude, for real. Mm -hmm. I, and I told people that. I like him, you know what I'm saying? He don't. He didn't, wasn't going out his way to disrespect. He really didn't know that that was a no-no. Mm -hmm. He really didn't know. He knew enough to try to get permission first. I could co-sign that. Yeah, he, when, he, tried to just, he was just trying to pump the fight up. When, and, when the know, fire got the boiling, I was part of reaching out to him to let him know what was up. And he came on my platform to kind of express himself. And I can say genuinely when I got at him, he was really like, 
oblivious. He was shocked. He wasn't trying to be shocked. Right, right. He, he yeah. even turned around and made a video apologizing. Yeah, we all agreed to promote the fight together. Right. And he just thought, which was, you know, on a marketing standpoint, it was still a good marketing thing, but it was a lot of other things to consider right. that he probably didn't consider. It, it mar the mar this YouTube stuff and, and gang stuff sometimes don't mix. You walk in a fine line, especially when you come from the culture we come from, but you in this social media world now, you have to walk a razor's edge on if you too much, if you can't bleed them both together. And that's the thing I try to do. That's why I tell you, I won't never get into it with somebody from Cali. It's just like when I did, you know, uh, you know, when I just did uh, last month or a few weeks ago, the rebuttal on what the essay was saying. And when I said what I said, hmm. and the little homie from Park, you know, I mean, from Imper uh, from PJ's, he said what he said. And I just took it. Like I said, I take a loss first. I made, I did make a video yeah. saying, "Hey, homie, don't take it personal." Well, look, I saw that title. I saw your title to what you did, what you said on the subject, in response to Dubs or mm -hmm. whatever. I think your video was like forty minutes. I may have heard three, four, five of the minutes. Skip through. And what I did hear you say is about us in general behind the wall, not being able to handle a second wave of attack. And I had no idea I was gonna get calls from the foyard yard from my homies that said simply this, hey yo, tell your boy, Tom, man, I like to highlight him, man, fill him in with some more details on that situation, man, so we get a little better understanding. So you know your word matters back there for us. Right. I just wanna ask you, whether it's true or not, do you think it would be wise for someone with your influence to be expressing that, making it obvious, especially for those that may be back there behind the wall on the front line where it might go down? Do we need to make the opposite side more aware of that being our situation, even if that's Hold the on, truth? Hold on, let me, let me, let me, okay. I'm gonna jump, I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna jump in on that one head first. You know what I'm saying? It's like I was telling, you know, I had homies, you know, I got homies in the pen too. You know, I got phone calls from them. And you can read in the comments and I can pull comments up where you got people that have walked the yard when I walked the yard. Now, like I say, my generation, homie. You did start off with that. Yeah, my generation. We, after you clarified that, you went in on the subject matter to the point where I don't think a lot of people caught that because people, disclaimer. Like, you know, because they don't listen. They listen with their emotions and not their brain. But you also went into it seemingly like you were stating and for the purpose of the playback, I'm going to ask the production we'll have. Your, 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 we're going to find a segment where you mm -hmm. said it. It seemed like you were explaining our current ability to withstand second wave of attack. Even though you start off by Hold saying on, but let me say, things when are I different. Said, I said, okay, okay, look, now, Pete, I sit there and I, I said, listen, man, if you are not from California, on this subject, your opinion's not gonna matter to me. And then I turn around, I let them know, if you haven't done time in the California CDC, your opinion don't matter Even to me. Even if you're from California. Right, because you don't know. Correct. And then I let them know, if, um, if you don't have a B number, a C number, or early D number, your opinion don't matter to me. You got a lot of people that's coming in, chiming in, who just start doing time. You just ask me out with my J number, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because some people that were, if you, I, I'm, I'm speaking on, can't nobody dispute what I'm speaking on, homie, because I was there. Mm -hmm. I was there. If you wasn't there during this time, you should have nothing to say. In that time, you're saying, the climate was such as what? I spoke on it. I say, man, look, in my, in my later years before I started going, before I, before I got ready to go home, the homies that was coming into the prison system, homie, was watered down. They getting these horror stories in the module. They getting these horror stories in the county jail. You know what I'm saying? Because I done heard them before. Man, the mess is this, the mess is that. Man, the mess is this. Woo, 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 woo. So by the time they hit the yard, they already like spooked of the mess. It's like, you know what I'm saying? They don't, and you know, homies, man, I'm, I'm right there when homies come like, in. Like, what year is this? Um, but I went home in 96. So this is prior. How long did you do? Uh, the last time in Cali, when you, I did when eight you, years before I paroled so the last this, time so in this Cali. is basically like 89, 80s that you, these having these conversations up between 89 and 96. But when you say conversation, like what you, you mean? You said the homies just talking about the message is this, the message is that. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, in the county jail, homies be talking about it. You know, all everything that go on, everything that goes on in the CDC. Late eighties to mid nineties. Late eighties, all through the eighties, mid mid eighties. No, mid eighties. Mid eighties and mid nineties. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. oh, you know what I'm saying? So homies coming in, and I'd have been in the county jail while I heard dudes talking. Man, 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 they're masking, man, they up in there, man, woo, woo, woo. So now dudes looking. So now homies that was coming in, they'll fight. They would fight. But they had they had reservations about putting that iron in their hand. The maskers were gonna put the iron in their hand off the rip because that's how they was bred. That's how they was taught. So now here it is. You got when I was in there right before I got out, homies in there that had been doing time. When the ride kick off or when it go down, when it's time to move, the homies that that had been putting in work for years gotta be the one to do it because the youngsters got an excuse. I wanna go home. I want my visit. Man, I want to catch though. Don't just blame it on the youngsters because them old niggas used to be with that shit too. Uh, See, man, have, I got a case, man. I ain't me. Y'all with that bullshit. I, I, I will admit but you. You're so right. You're so right, though. You're so, so right. Now, here it is. And we was already outnumbered. Already outnumbered. You only had, when like when Doves made the statement, the reason why he feel they could win is because the blacks couldn't withstand wave after wave. See, people ain't looking at that. When we get into it, most of the blacks that's gonna ride, they gonna get into it in the first wave. Then here it is, the, the few that's left, they gonna get into it in the second wave. Now you got all the riders from the blacks gone. You ain't got nothing left, but them fools who ain't gonna throw rice at a wedding. And people keep looking at it like I'm speaking on the Crips or the Bloods or people from Cali. No, you got a gang of fools from up north. You feel what I'm saying? It's many times, now you know this ain't no dig with the homies from up north. But at, when I was in the prison system, it was a lot of them. Wasn't, they, they, wasn't, they wasn't going, you know what I'm saying? With the maskers, homie, it kept falling on us. You know what I'm saying? The Crips and the blood, oh, the rock, it kept falling on us. And so, man, I done, you know, can't nobody dispute my truth, homie. I done been in rise and see homies running. Here it is. It might be 30 blacks, but only 15 of them get out. Only 10 of them get out. No, I've been. And the rest run. I've been in Supermax, outnumbered. Like, I remember. But how, many, okay, let me, how many times you seen homies run? No, I remember him saying, don't run, y'all. Don't run. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of the shit. Well, I, do, I get mad about yeah, it. Yeah, Somebody yeah, yeah. tell me what I didn't see. And you'll see a 60, 70-year-old Mexican with a cane who can't barely walk good on the front line on the opposite side. Right, right. Yeah, so, it, so it, man, yeah. You know, so can't nobody tell me what I didn't see? Period. Can't, they can't tell me, and I explained to them. I talk about my error. So, like with the youngster, homie, how you going How you gonna make a video disputing what I'm talking about? You wasn't even born when I was in prison. No, you know what? When you when you say I didn't, like I said, I didn't watch the whole thing, and then I told you the part that I saw that I was like, hmm. My thing is this, based on just general, because we know your platform is about giving your experience and perspective on things that you are expert on, which is highly street and. Being in, in, in behind the wall. That's highly what your content yeah. uh, re revolves around. So when it comes to the California system, I know you're going to be interested in such a hot topic. But I think that what took place in Salinas a few months prior and the coverage it got, got certain individuals discussing certain shit online that might not necessarily be the wisest thing to discuss. And I, that's, that was my perspective on it, because I just didn't know, because I totally well, agree I, with you through experience know, through the 90s. Well, let me say, I don't know what, what they they what they were saying, but... It sounded like you it sound like you were saying, and I, I want to admit, again, I didn't watch the whole thing. Hey, take that call for me, huh? And to a lot of others, it may have seemed like you were saying, like, right now, and it still may be true, now that it's out here, we're discussing it, but it seemed like you were declaring, we shot it for a round or two, but if they keep it coming, we asked out. So if that's my truth and that's what I seen to my blue notes out there that went through the struggles, I apologize to all y'all, homie. I apologize to all y'all. That video that I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying? It, it was kicking, what, 100,000 views in the behind. But not no more. I took it down. I took it down, man. Because for one, it never should have been made. It never should have been made. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I, I I talked to a homie who who opened my eyes just now. I'm getting off the phone and I'm making this video right now because I spoke, I spoke with a homie. The homie Kiko from 1180's Coast. Real East Sider, man. Real East Sider. I was on the phone with him and the homie Spider Loke from 970's Coast. I was talking to Spider Loke and um, Kiko called in. 
and he tapped us all in together. You know what I'm saying? Don't nothing happen by happenstance. Everything that happens, it happens for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Other races, no matter how bad they look or no matter how good they look, they going to keep their business internal. They are not going to air their business out even if it makes them look bad. I mean, especially if it makes them look bad. They are not going to air their business on no public open platform. And my big stupid behind should have followed suit. But I, you know what I'm saying? I did, I did, I, 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 I let my emotions get the best of me. And anytime you let your emotions get the best of you, nine times out of 10, you're going to make a rash and wrong decision. They shouldn't get, you know what I'm saying? How can they say that? Because I've seen that. This is my only, this is my, uh, damn, without seeing the uh, motherfucking, uh, Dreads, you do like Gerald Levert, like a motherfucker. But, uh, oh God. but this is my thing. Somebody this this is my only thing. That's deep. My deepest thought process is this. When you was in there going through that and it was a reality, there was nobody online from the opposite side with a big ass voice making an announcement. Hey, if y'all do so and so, we can't handle it. But you know what? Uh, let me 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 okay. jump in on that one, man. This is like uh th this is a situation like um you know, a family who got that retarded uncle that they got hid in the back room and don't want nobody to see when company come over. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Basically like saying, dang homie, don't air don't air out our dirty laundry. Man, that I man bump all that, homie. If 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 the homies wouldn't have did it, if it wouldn't have, if I wouldn't have seen it, now I'm saying homies, I'm speaking on blacks, period. Yeah. Because we, you know, uh, what I'm why, saying why are you speaking, is a lot of Think flat. about the ones that's sitting down right now. Yeah, yeah, but hold on, okay, hold on. Okay. The ones that's sitting down right now, you could have, you could have got it, you you could take it, you can get on, you can get on phone with a dude right now who been down 20 years, 25 years, long time, right? He still wasn't in prison when I was there, though. That's, that's, that's where the flack is coming from. Not nobody from my generation or not nobody that was in prison when I was doing time. Because if you talk to any of them, they're going to tell you everything Toon saying is real. You got fools who coming from who wasn't there, who talking about uh, time they did on their little level three. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, like, come like, in, no, hold, man, pipe down, hold up. Nothing little about no level three. Oh, well, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It's just because <laughs> That's I, you the know, highest yard I've been on. You know what I'm saying? So, but anyway... You and know, I started off on the two, right? And my but, points but went they, up, but now I'm so saying, I feel like I feel you know. Yeah. But they didn't walk the, the, the right. Yours, right. I walk them. I get it. I hear dudes, you know, I be in my comments, dudes talking about. You know, I'm not gonna say no names. Like, uh, they got there, they, homie. They, they had a knife, or they did say, man, what you do with it, homie? Mm. I got three teardrops on my face, homie. You know, all three of them mm. represent my work I put in mm. in that wall. Mm. How many shoot terms you did? How many? How many stabbing cases you got up in there? How many rides you been in? How many disciplinaries you got? What have you done? I don't care nothing about because you walked the yard in prison. Mm -hmm. What have you did that, while you was there? I did it. The day I went home, <laughs> if the gate would have opened up that morning, I would never have went home because the homie got blasted by the essays from Durock. Big man from Durock got blasted. Me and the homie Crip Cal from schoolyard, I say, cuz, get the knives out the TV. He like, tune for what? I'm like, man, we finna take off in the morning. He say, tune, you go home tomorrow. I say, cuz, I ain't home till I get there. Mm. They hit our people, but homie, I ain't like that. Man, see, this, this is what I think we all appreciate from you, cuz you come on here like everybody jolly uncle. And you tell your stories like you talking to your nephews, like you just having a campfire story. You're not trying to get no stripes. You even taught me about the art of being so honest that try to tell your L's before your W's. Real. People will Real. feel like your authenticity. So I, I admire your approach so much. But then when you get so caught up on principle and integrity, you start reminding me of the fire that I used to stand on that caused me to be so stumped down. And I see how it's so... Do you bleed that into the individual that you entertain on this networking online as you stepped into basically the hip hop scene. Cause this is like mm -hmm. a, a version of the hip hop nowadays. So you kind of like on the map, like if you was an OG rapper and I know you collabing, you popping, and I know the game is networking with people that have a following. Do you use integrity, character assessment, who is who, where you fit in out here before you choose to collab or do business or are you, cause me and the producer of this show, Alex, we have an ongoing debate about a few of these platforms. Are they just about engaging with anybody that has a 
some type of viral um, appeal or do they have some integrity? So I want to know, just as a question, shifting gears, before you collab with an individual who claims to be from our culture, do you put them through any type of background check or anything of that nature? And before you answer, you, know you might want to check. Answer real you might want to check. You so. might want to check our lab. Oh, you don't. I don't think so. Okay. Um, me, me personally, if um, if I'm an interview a person or be interviewed by, them, to be honest with you, like in this social media world, I'm just going. I mean, unless they just are real, like, you know, unless they just you know show up, man, that fool, you know, I just you know I'm gonna go with it because, for instance, like uh. Hand him his phone well, I, back. I, 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 Hand him his phone back while he's talking, please. So I want him to check my last text I just sent okay. you. Okay. I'll give you a perfect example. It'd be a lot of people online um asking me, um, to, you shouldn't you shouldn't fight six hundred, man. Um Y'all you do any business in Ohio? No, I never You don't know, you're a promoter event in Ohio? Uh uh-uh. uh. No? My home my homies have. They're using your name. Huh? Look at look at the thing. You for real? What? You know you promote shows in Ohio? Cause I don't know nothing about this. <laughs> Are you for real? Yeah, somebody owe you something, man. You sure this is me? Wait a minute, hold on, cuz. Yeah, he saw. He saw. That got that got shut down. Oh, oh, wait, what the? Wow. Oh. Wow. Cause I had no idea this is what I was doing. That's crazy. Yeah, that's so for the audience who don't yeah, know. Stuff like this, it go through him. Yeah. Wow. Wait, wait, so wait, wait, wait. Background wait. check and everything. No, it's my turn. We, we gonna let, yeah. Let me let me catch the listeners up. Yeah. When Cartoon popped up today, I haven't seen Oh, him. you told me about that. Yeah. Okay, wait. We get, shut it down right, because of cool. the old boy. Yeah, yeah, I see you. Okay, but yeah. I wanna just explain all the irony attached because when I met the homie today, I thought I'd been knowing him for years. Uh -huh. I thought you pulled up with one of your homies from the east side. Right, right, I've been right. knowing. I've been placing my head like, where I know this nigga from? Then right before we went live, you said, you introduced him, he's from out of town. I don't know him. So I'm like, oh, okay. So then I've already had this flyer loaded up uh -huh. for days right. to get at you about. So when I got at you, never in a million years did I think he was in any way attached. Because he's from Colorado, correct? Mm -hmm. And this is Ohio, so never did it Colorado. Oh, they say Colorado? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I thought it said Ohio. So that's how awful it was. I never in a million years ago thinking about him. So when I asked you about it, and then you turned to him, I thought we was going to have a real live <laughs> moment. So please explain how your name get crossed up with the most goofy individual no, okay. known to the internet in the last, he I don't know how long. He can explain it. The homie here can explain it better Just than me. Just voice or face? Voice. Go ahead. Voice, yeah. Go ahead. We do promotions. We break careers. Big Scar came through us first. Cotto two times, Gucci Man artist. I'm I'm responsible for Lil Thravieso. I ain't gonna say all success, but I put him in the game. We try to cross racial divisions. And when I when I did that, I got a song with him. Snoopy Badass hit me on the song, and I was like, boom. So once he hit me, I was like, we do shows, we move quick. And he was like, well, how quick did you move? I said, I would like to talk to G, uh, DB the General. Boom, <laughs> hit him real quick. And I was like, I sent him a flyer. I was like, well, I do stuff for Tune. Tune's my manager. You know what I mean? I would like to bring him. And he was, so I, I threw a flyer together real quick in 10 minutes, mm -hmm. sent it to him. And I was like, he said, what Tune say? He was like, Tune from Avalon, right? I said, oh, so that was a red flag. So I hit Tune up and Tune was like, we ain't doing that show. So <laughs> it just ended just like that. That's right. We ain't going to do it. It started right. and ended. It was like literally 20 minutes. Well, since it's so yeah, old, old, old boy, you know what I'm saying? Old boy, you know what I'm saying? I got a homie in, in prison doing a million years behind this clown, you know? If you didn't know, I was going to make you aware. But because it's, it turned out to be such pure energy, go ahead and plug your uh, your brand where they can tap in with you if they mm -hmm. trying to. Oh, man. It's, you can YouTube me, Smurf Nacho. All right. Appreciate you that. You remember when I did the, uh, the Sibo thing? Remember? When Shout I went to Colorado. Cibo. Yep, 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 yep. You hit me That's up. That's how I end up out there. This the homie right here. Oh, you fuck yeah. with Sibo? Yeah, all the, I know all them. Signed with AP9. Those AP9. Shout out Killer Tay Sibo. Um, they both was part of my like introduction to like the rap game. I, I appreciate both them cats. 
Man, right. I hold on, I got hit. So the whole time you sitting there thinking like, dang, Toon, you were, you you just gonna uh, roll in the mud with a pig for a dollar. Man, I was finna, man, you were set up. I was finna <laughs> believe. You see how I tried to tip? I was finna believe yeah, you. Yeah, 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 no, homie. Yeah. You know, that's okay, cause I could, really couldn't understand what you were saying with the interrogation. No, homie, no, homie. Man, it's East Side Riders, homie. It's man, no. free TC, man, 88th Street, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, my, yeah, my, yeah. My, my, my. No, you gotta. No matter what you do in life, homie, you got to have a level of integrity to it. You just can't sell your soul and do anything for no clout or two, three pennies, homie. That ain't gonna never be me. So back to somebody we spoke about earlier, <laughs> and I'm gonna ask this as if I'm a part of the audience, as if I have no idea of the answer. Is the bout still on with you in 600 or not? <laughs> A lot of people ask me that. Okay, I, um, when we were supposed to get out in the, on, I think what well, December fourteenth. Yes, I called him right before because I'm finna book my ticket. He said, "No, nah, Tuna, I can't do it." I'm like, "Well, what's going on?" He said, "Uh, December is a blackout month for me. What that meant, I don't know." I said, "Well, dang, homie, I was finna go ahead and pay for my ticket and come on out." He said, "No, nah, let's push it back to February seventeenth." And I'll pay for your ticket. I'll bring you out. I said, February 7th. Okay, cool. I said, well, look, this is what I need for you to do. Come on my show and let the world know that it ain't me backing out, that you know, we you have to postpone it. So he came, he did, he came on my live. He let everybody know, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no thing. Um, I had to back out for a minute because I got some stuff that I have to do in December, but it's gonna we're gonna push it back to February. Boom. You know, I, you know, some people gonna see it, some people not. A lot of people be still asking me, too, what about the fight? What about the fight? But in 600's defense, the, the December 14th date was initially on me to secure. And due to technical reasons, mm -hmm. you know, we weren't able to lock it in. And right, 600, right, right. based on his experience in the game, he thought he was going to be able to secure a December date as a secondary option. And it fell through. But initially, it was my arrangements on the 14th and then based on we tried to take it to such a high level and yeah. get it passed through the commission and make it such a large event and they not familiar with the personalities we couldn't get it clear right and so it was i want to just make it clear that it was on me and my promotions that didn't quite come through initially before 600 tried to say today yeah so as far as i know it's supposed to be um february 17th if it happened cool if it don't you know what i'm saying so and I like you know people you know I still getting in the comments like man woo, woo, like and I say it again for the world to see for the world to know me and six hundred are cool with each other we do not have a beef yeah, we all. get along you know what I'm saying I can call him right now I I, I like I tell you I like to I like the big guy you know what I'm saying we were just gonna you know you know fight for the culture for the promotion just to be doing something so stop trying to paint a narrative that me and old boy beef and hate each other it ain't like that. Period. Well, so, you know, at the end of the day, if we fight, we fight. If we don't, we don't. I am not a trained monkey that's going to jump on camera to try to entertain the world. No. This is my thing. Um, in preparation to the fight, I've seen some footage of you in the ring uh, dealing with somebody who has, he's thinner, but he sim seems to have similar advantages over you physically that 600 has when it comes to height and reach. The guy. Yeah, he yeah. seems to be a little more- Long arm fool. He seems to be a little more flat on his feet, like he may have a little more boxing experience. He seems more settled, calculated. I wanna know, as we as a public, seem like you had a little difficulty dealing with that skill set. Do you think that would translate to <laughs> someone like 600 who may have the similar advantage over your reach, height, and experience in the actual ring not necessarily fighting mm -mm. No, no i don't because all right the footage i put up my headgear if they see it you know when old boy no, caught me the no, whole no, head gear no, no we saw i don't know if that's something to say ooh, about what he did or is it like ah oh, his headgear was fucked up that no, could, no, be, no. A, look, that could look. be a great shot that just right your head gear. If, you, if you see what i say you know i talk about it. one thing hey homie I'm a, like I say, I talk about no, my wins. I, I, I talk about my losses. No, I'm, I'm speaking to the to the. Oh, okay, you know, yeah, he didn't get. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I speak about my wins. I speak about my losses. That's one thing I ain't never. I'm a real East Side homie. You, you you can't win them all. You that can't right. lose them all. You feel what I'm saying? Um, like I said, I said when I, on the title of the, on the title of the clip, I put it. I said, man, oh boy, reach out from across the ring and serve me. You know what I'm saying? He caught me bang and it spun my headgear. <laughs> and then like you see on one of them, I, I kept having the black headgear then the white headgear on. It just couldn't get it right, my big head self. Right. But um, 
you know, long, you know, long arm is the advantage. But my thing is, homie, if I, you know, I win, I look good. It don't. I, I ain't never been the type to be conscientious about that type. Of get out. You know what I'm saying? I'm just gonna get out, homie. What you, what, like I say, when I say I'm a real East Side, how I grew up, just do it. You win, you win. You lose, you lose. I ain't tripping on it if it look bad. Cause guess what? If I get on camera and get knocked out, guess what? Man, I'm still going viral. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I definitely see that in you because what I saw when you was in there with that tall, slimmer dude, he just seemed like he knew his way around the ring more mm -hmm. because every time you find a way to get around that reach. Ooh, answer that for me, cuz. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to get as important as cuz. His phone popping. And um, he ain't even in his hometown. But uh, I mean, it's his home. <laughs> He in his hometown, but he, like, yeah, my bad, right. he not in the town in which he currently resides, right. where his current motion is constant. But uh, that was a joke. But I want to say this. I, wait, I saw him do, because you know I'm cheering for you. I'm thinking, you've, mm -hmm. I'm thinking you, you was baiting us in with a trick, like bullshit title, and then you finna over, mm -hmm. over you know, clickbait. Oh, old boy caught me. Yeah, but he, he didn't do me. nothing terrible, but he no. did. But what I saw was when you did get behind the reach, you know what he would do? Immediately close the gap. You're right, you. right, and that's part of that's part of boxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't about beating nobody up. Right, you right. You just tell he does this. He probably that's probably how he passes his time. Well, no, all he, the time. He, he get out. He you could tell. Our, um, our sister Jim, he's the heavyweight fighter from our sister Jim. And, yeah, and I just wonder if six hundred would um, probably pose a similar challenge, but we could leave that alone. He probably, no, no, he probably could. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I don't care. I, <laughs> you know, so it's I obvious care. you didn't care then, but yeah, you know, yeah. That, I, I, that's my thing. You know, we told the, that's why I tell 600, man, if we don't get out, we gonna look, we gonna have egg on our face because we mm -hmm. talked about it so much. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even if it's, even if it's not in a, in a, in an open forum where everybody can see, I'm, you know, like I'm, I'm in LA right now. If Cuz hit me and say, man, tune, look, this is going to put the gloves on, homie. Let's just do it for the camera so they'll leave us alone. I got what a gym. I, I know I did it off camera, but I called him while we was here. He didn't answer. But I got a gym. I got a location. I got some cameras. HD, high quality. So while you out here, if we can arrange that, we can just get it in. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the homie, man. Because we, me and him Smart. me and him both understand. We talk. You know what I'm saying? I'm, we ain't trying to kill we each other. Oh, that to the coach. We just go. Yeah, we just, you know, yeah. do our thing, you know? Yeah. Oh it ain't no thing, you know, uh, but people that are in different states and even in Cali, they want to see, they like a gladiator around. They want to see blood. They want to see bash and smash. They want me and him to get on camera and F this, F that, you this, you that. No, nah, y'all doing the wrong thing, homie, you know. Oh my, when, my, my, when my. lose a draw, homie, I'm always stick my head in. You know what I'm saying? Right. It ain't nothing. But people don't probably really grasp the idea of how much scuffling and scraping and testing your strength was a part of the cultural sport right. coming up. You, you know how we yeah, come up on that exactly. easy, man. You know, exactly. I tell people all the time, man, when I was coming up, you couldn't even come outside on the porch with your little egg sandwich your mama made you. Your homies are taking if you oh, were going to get out. Yeah. Oh, my mama, mama. Damn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell me this, man, with all the vast experiences that you have and the way the public grabs to your expression so well Have you ever thought doing something more tr traditional like writing a book most people from your generation I mean, i'm doing it now i'm in the process this. now it's uh the name of it is a uh, product of my environment product of my environment. I'm right in the, i'm right in the middle of it uh the homie kelly dog from um from guard block in sacramento he the one helping me get this published and all that people a lot of people where the book at man where is that I just, it don't happen overnight you know what right. i'm saying it don't happen overnight right. nothing good does right right i'm in the process of, of knocking that out um um, shoot, I got man, I got so much stuff in the making. Uh, people been calling me for movie auditions. Mm. How they got my number, I don't know. So, because mm. I'm supposed to be, um, uh, I'm supposed to be going on some type of audition for something called All the Queen's Men. I'm gonna let you know, it's a very, very um, liberal production, everything goes. I could see you fitting in there as well. What do you mean everything go? It's about uh, all the Queen's men are male strippers. Oh no, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to be her bodyguard. I'm just letting you know what the whole thing. Oh, so you hip to the show. Yeah. Oh no, homie, I'm too big. I ain't doing no stripping. That's my I'm supposed to be a bodyguard. My homie baby mama is the, the, the star of the show. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh girl, yeah, they say she graduated from Washington. Yeah, you know her, her baby daddy from 97. Her baby daddy from 97th Street. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I'm supposed to be I'm supposed to be a bodyguard. That's yeah, it. okay. <laughs> Salute. You know. I swear to God, I see you fitting right in, no none of the bullshit with the 
you got the yeah you got mm-hmm. God has blessed you with enough youth and um, charisma where I can see you doing that. Salute to that man. You might have a big future in that. I hope it comes on my mama mama. It, but even if it don't, man, I got so I got some stuff, man, on um that I got in the work. And when I get back to Alabama on this YouTube thing, I'm gonna speak on it. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't know how impactful generosity is in this mm. YouTube world. A lot of big YouTubers. Forget the big youper. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to homie C Mac. A lot of people don't know how much him feeding the homeless did for his career. Mm. Yeah, he talked that five me five me and talked the game, talking this and that. But it's a lot of people that became enamored with him because he looked out for the homeless. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? And um, that kind of, that boosted him up, boosted him up, boosted him up. And I say, you know what? That's the blueprint. Mm. I'm giving up. I'm giving up some game now. I'm giving up some secrets that other YouTubers might latch on. Free C Mac the Loke, man. Free C Mac. Yeah. Uh, Mama Bear. Remember, I told you if you need me, holler at me. But anyway, um, and I want to just insert that I was instrumental in allowing C Mac and Cartoon to get into a very comfortable space when it wasn't that comfortable. Since people are not gonna just, they might not know that. But yeah, go ahead. That was you. Yeah, come on now, cause you know who your son you, you is. Man, I give everybody Shout a flower. Out to that Jeff was Fye. you. Yeah, oh, my was mama, you. mama. Yeah, and it was yeah, all, you know, it was I all confused. I, yeah, yeah, I couldn't remember how you know, you know, really met the cat. Like, okay, it was you, yes, sir. Cause man, you, shout out to Spider-Man. you was on go. Remember, you was on go. Right, and right. I, I stood in the gap, like, nah, nah, nah. Right, and I tried right. to explain his character and everything, and you was man enough to look at it a different way, and then. You got your own line with him, and then y'all, I, I, I've been appreciating the way right, you've been. Right. Yeah, but go ahead. But finish your thought, please. Um, feeding the I'm homeless. Start doing some. I ain't gonna feed the homeless. It's some other stuff, you know. I, you know what? I'm gonna keep it a secret. I'm gonna keep it a secret because somebody <laughs> might take and run with it. You know what there I'm saying? There you go. But yeah, uh, I'm finna get into that. But now I'm also finna start. I'm finna start doing my little skits. I done already got the contracts made up. I got three, four different women. I got three, four different dudes. I'm like, what do you mean? You know. So for those who might like be on YouTube a lot and listen to Country Wayne, mm. I'm finna start doing that type get out. I got the whole hookup, mm. you know what I'm saying? Mine gonna be a ghetto version. Country Wayne keep his real clean. Right. I'm finna start doing like the little he, ghetto version. But he version doesn't curse. Right, and then the stuff he, and a lot of stuff he do, a lot of his topics are clean. I'm gonna put it like that. Mm. A lot of his topics are clean. My topics don't, you know, just be a little bit more. Man, I'm, a, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gotta say, what they say, bon voyage, farewell, see you later, Serenata. You on your way, you on your way up out of here, bro. You know yeah, that's the lick for you because you able to be so stumped down representative of the bullshit out here, but you had the confidence to be in the good guy, the happy guy, the jolly guy, yeah, the yeah, blessed man. guy, similar to C-Mac, similar to Country Rain. And I see you merging that and being able to take off. That's my thing. When you when you comfortable with yourself, homie, you ain't got to put the mask on. Mm-hmm. Now I tell people all the time, everybody wears a mask to a certain extent mm-hmm. because don't nobody want to be seen in a bad light. So when you meet a person, you meet in a mask. That doesn't always mean when the mask slips because the mask will slip if you deal with them long enough. Mm-hmm. When that mask slips, that doesn't mean that the person you see behind the mask is, is garbage or boo boo. Mm-hmm. They just might be just a little different from the person they presented themselves to be at the first. But I tell them when that mask slip and if what you see behind that mask is not conducive to your program or you somebody you don't want to fool with and you continue to, when it go bad, it's your fault, homie. Mm-hmm. Birds of a feather flock together. Mm-hmm. And Bobby, no, it don't, man. Woo, woo, woo. I don't do all that because he do it. But but you hang with him every day. And if you hang with him every day and you see he keep doing these type things and you don't confront him on it or get away from him, that means you approve of what he's doing. So birds of a feather do flock together. Boy, do you know I have one of my most accepted lyrics in my community in the last few years starts off when you're sticking to the script, it's a lonely road. And that's a bullet you got to bite sometimes. When you stand on principles and say you represent some of the things we claim to represent, you have to be willing and able to watch everybody disagree with you and still stand on something. Kind of remind me of what Cat Williams went through recently. Mm-hmm. You got any thoughts on that debacle, the viral debacle, what he expressed and his his boldness? He gave it up. He gave it up. He gave it up. How I many? You know what I'm saying? I, I I love Cat Williams. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I support I support him 100. percent and he, you know what I'm saying? He talk about them gatekeepers, them gatekeepers. He talk, I call them, I call it them them lackeys. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That it's so much in that, in that, in that, in that, in that entertainment world, whether it's music or show business, it's a lot of devilish stuff that go on behind the scenes. Mm. And one one thing he said, I love it, man. I love it to the to the bitter end. When he said, Man, I'm not putting no dress on. 
He say, if you look at it, all, all, all the, all the big name stars, whatever, them devils that own, that got the money, they always want to emasculate the black man by somehow, some way, put them in a dress and make it seem like, oh, it's just comedy. Oh, it's just cool, man. Fuck Bump all that. that. Yeah. That's why they used to always be down on cat because he say, no, I'm not doing that. Him and uh, what's the other brother name? Dave Chappelle. They wasn't fit to sell they sold, homie. Hey, but you know, recently there's been footage of Dave Chappelle apparently who seemingly he actually wore the dress at one point for really? uh, for Howard Stern skit. God dang. Yeah. Well, back, back, back to cat. Like I said, you back to Cat then. Cat ain't putting no dress on. You, you know, if I was to get into the, the the movie industry, you know what I'm saying, off the rip, I'm not doing no gay scenes, and I'm not putting on no dress. Do right, you have an agent? Not like that, no. I'm finna introduce you to a very good man. Okay. Larry, Larry, Williams Talent Agency. Got one coming your way, bro. You already see what it is, Larry. I got you. Put you in some good places, but you know one thing I appreciate about the whole Cat William um, debacle is that it kept coming out that he's generous with money. He likes to look out for people in places where they don't expect it, and I tend to really resonate that and believe that because one of your little homies from from uh, Five Trey Blue Down mm -hmm. used to be my artist. His name was Bigfoot. He on his peas now. Yeah, he go by Money Hungry. That's my loke. And I remember at one point when he first really jumped out on his peas and was out there, <clears throat> he encountered Cat Williams by chance in a hotel lobby real briefly. And and Cat Williams put 500 in his pocket. He, and it was like Bigfoot was like, man, they gave me 500. Like, he couldn't explain why, was no. So when people start saying that about him, I can say, damn, shout out to Foots. I know that's a real thing. That mm -hmm. That is a part of his character that I know is true. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mama, mama. And, 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 and shout out to Big Monique, man. Big Monique. Man, big Monique. OG Monique? The, the the female comedian. You on your, so that's, she, she is in your uh, arena or just in general? No, I just like her. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I feel for her plight. I feel for what she went through with, uh, when she was, you yeah, know. I like the line she pushed <clears> Beefing with the people. I ain't even so say the other people's name. Right. But when she was beefing with them, I just feel for a plight. You know, she a real sister to me. Right. I agree, too. I agree. I'm not even a big fan of her actual art. But what she went through and the courage it took to stand on her right. business, I appreciate a lot on my mama mama. Um, I don't know if the answer is going to be what I think. But tell me this. With this new generation of music, who you feeling out here on the New, um, new guys. Well, first off, I'm not a big fan of rap. Period. I understand. I understand what's going through because I, you know, rap uh, music has such an influence on our culture, and it, and that's one of the reasons why black people as a culture we going down a, a crazy path because of this 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 the, the, what they talking about in this rap music nowadays. But you know what I'm saying? I do hear I do hear rap songs that I do like. Like I say, you know, the hardest rap in LA to me right now is your homeboy, uh, Zo Osama. He saw You know what I'm saying? That, I mean, I, I like everything he make. You know what I'm saying? He, he, can get on, he can get on there and blow spit bubbles. I like it, you know? You, you know what that resonates with me? You come from a generation before gangster rap where the gangsters love party music. Mm -hmm. And he, even though it's gangster, he makes music that rocks the party. Yeah. So, and then you are a hybrid of old and young. You can tell by the your style, your hairstyle, you a hybrid. So I like that and now you can uh like you can that. appreciate both. And I think right. with him going with that traditional West Coast old school style with the new twist, I think he found the perfect thing. Shout out to the homies old man. He got a, such a unique voice. The way it is his presentation. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Do your thing, homie. Different crazy. It's the deal, cuz. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my wow. mama, mama. Anybody from your section, young, talented? Shoot, man, my homeboy boy, Tebow. Tebow? I was just with him last night, man. I, you know, Tebow, a matter of fact, I'm interviewing. Um, Tebow, he make, he make, I like everything he make. You know, that's the homie. Uh, the homie um, G Cell was on that. Um, Shout out G Cell. Where my yeah. nigga at, homie <laughs> He out there. I got you. Is that right? Yeah, he there. That's probably the most original nigga from all there I know that was really running around these studios recording, politicking, G Cell. Yeah. Oh God, I remember him from way back. Oh my mama, mama, mama. Now my homie, you you probably know him too, like my homie Gian. Yes, my low. Yeah, he now he got he made a song back in the day for the set called Paying Homage. Yeah, I don't I wasn't aware. Of that. You got to hear that song. That might be my favorite song. Yeah. As far as the hood go, man, he made a song called Paying Homage, and the video was so unique because he got pictures of everybody and it's coming and everything that we went through. And it um if, if if you listen to it, paying homage from um Gian, 
And uh, the, when it first started out, he like uh, he say uh, cause back in the day, the homie uh, he say he say back in the day, big cartoon bust a cap of the cop. You know what I'm mm. saying? When it first your name in there, okay? <laughs> he just talked about a lot of stuff with everybody right, was right. doing and going on. But yeah, that's 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 a hard one, man. Right. Uh, I don't know if this was off camera or on camera, but you mentioned G Face earlier, mm -hmm. and I know it went from whatever it went to to bad to where y'all cool, but. You mind taking us on a journey for those that might didn't um, understand what was going what on? What took place? This is what happened. Um, now the world knows. I don't like that clown American show no. Mm. Period. Oh, I didn't, I, I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I thought you. Yeah, that's what, back back. You know, back when um, like with the, when the Tiger incident and all that was going mm -hmm. on a few years ago. Mm -hmm. I was going in. I was going. You know, I was mm -hmm. going in. And um, I, I don't like, because I see through him, he fake, mm. he don't like us. Mm. I don't care how much he try to use us on his show, because that's all he be doing. Mm. But yeah, so anyway, um, as when 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 Wack went to his house, the, uh, the dude G-Face had made a video, and then he made a statement saying, we run LA. That mm. rubbed me the wrong way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I still got my prison mentality. I still got the, the, the way of thinking how I thought when I was in prison. So, you know, when you make a statement, we run this, hold on, homie, you gonna run? In, well, okay, let me calm down. Anyway, so when he made that, I made a video on that, going in about that. What had happened was, he seen my video, how, you know, somebody, you know, people send you stuff. Right. He got in my comments and he was like, oh, big dog, check it out. No, it ain't no disrespect, homie, it ain't this or that. And he's basically like smoothed it over, but I missed it. I never seen the comment. So when I did, when I missed it, when I didn't see the comment, I went in on him again. Mm -hmm. Cause he had, he made a video making a statement talking about telling C-Mac to kick back before you get smoked. Mm -hmm. No, homie, you know, you know, you y'all don't take one of ours for free like that. Mm -hmm. Well, we you just gonna say this and you know, I'm like trying to figure out ain't nobody, ain't nobody stepping up for the homie. You know, you just, right. Cause you don't, you know what you just anyway. So I went in on that, you know, boom, 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 boom. And he he had tried to straighten it out. But I missed it. So when I kept hitting him, kept hitting him, it really it didn't give him no choice but to strike back. Because if you keep hitting me, and I, you know, I tried to be right. cool with you, but you keep on dissing me. And so he he hit me back. Wop, 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 wop. So now in my mind, oh, it's on. You know, we whoop, whoop, whoop. So that's when he come with the, um, you know, of course, you people going to say whatever they need to say to try to hurt you and say stuff about you. It's the same way I was hitting at him. Whatever I heard up in the air, you know, boom, boom, boom. So we going at it. So now it came to the point. Well, you know, we can get down this, that, and other. Yes, I, we gonna get down. Mm -hmm. as soon as I. But now, like I say, I was on parole at the time. I couldn't come to L.A. If I could have, homie, I got the money because I could have called. A, I could have right. booked a ticket. I'm so glad you came. was on parole and couldn't come, man. And I'm so glad you got in because past it would have went. It would have yeah, went. Yeah. It would have went way beyond yeah. me and him. Because even the homies knew it. They were like, "Cuz, well, let's saddle up then." You know, this finna be a race war. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm I'm, 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 I'm gonna speak to you on that one. Keep going. And um, so because I, it went deeper, it went to another chapter. So yeah, it would have. No, it, it did. Went, went, yeah, well, it went, went way, way deeper than what it went. Yeah, you. But, but it did because it, it was it, it, ups and downs. This wasn't the end of it. Keep going, right? right. Yeah, what happened? So um, now here it is. You like to say it's, it's it's going up now. It's going up. So I'm like I'm like yeah, I'll be there next month, homie. Don't trip, because I got to get permission to come to California. Mm -hmm. And so boom, I'm like, yeah, I'll be there next month. We gonna we gonna you know I'm making a video letting it know, yeah, letting the world know, <clears throat> I'm finna show up, homie. Yeah, we gonna see. You know what I'm saying? You didn't talk about what you did to the homie. You didn't, you, you oh, know, yeah. call me names. You threw that in there. That's the put out with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know, the homies got on my bumper about that. I remember. So, um, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, and come to find out that wasn't even true. You lying? It wasn't even true. The same way, like the phone calls he's supposed to make. You lying? The, like, same way you found it. It, it, it wasn't even no, true. I'm not accusing you, know? you of lying. I'm just shocked. No, I know, I know, I know, I know. Wow. So, um, G face, come on, partner, come on, man. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna holler at you. Yeah. So um, what it, what it, what it ha what had happened was okay. So it's, it, we wait. I'm fin I'm on my way, but now he had been trying to reach out to me, mm. behind the scenes. He had been trying to reach out to me, and uh, but I was um like I was talking to the dude uh the the, the essay dude uh Southsiders reaction Blueface Blue mm. Devil shout out Blue Devil yeah Blue yeah. Devil and um uh, fully. I, you know, it was, I was, I was, I was, I was, you know, he got at me. I'm like, I said, man, the man called me a B-I-T-C-H, homie. Where I'm from, that's war. We go, we go, we got to get it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, definitely. And so, boom. I said, I just, I'll be there next month. But between then, so he couldn't, he could, I seen him in my IG, but I was ignoring it. Mm, thinking he woofing. 
No, I just I, just ignored it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, bump that. We didn't already said what we gonna do. Ain't no need to keep on talking. Mm -hmm. He got at uh, a little brother called Tazo TV. Tazo out of Cleveland, mm -hmm. and me and Tazo kind of like this. We cool. So Tazo got at me. He said, "Tune, you need to listen to what he's saying." I said, "No, cuz I don't want to listen to what he's saying." You know, he said this, this, and this is on. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing to talk about. He said, "No, Tune." He, he went to talking to me about. It. He said, "Just listen to him. Just talk to him." And when I talked to him. He hooked us up on the phone. He like, look, big dog, this done went clean out of hand, homie. He said, man, you said this and said that. He said, I tried to clear the air up, but you didn't. I said, what you mean you tried to clear the air up? I go back to my comments. Mm. And I seen where, you know, I said, oh, God. If I would have seen that from the beginning, we never, never ever, did. ever would have went where we went with it. And I told him, I said, homie, I didn't see this. He said, yeah, man, I tried to, you know, woo, 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 but you, I don't want to smoke with you like that, man. It ain't no thing. Woo, woo, woo. I said, I told him, I said, homie, my bad. I missed it. I said, you said some stuff. I said some stuff. I said, but now, now, now that I see this. And, we, and, you know, he was talking with sense, and, you know, we, we cleared the air. Right. And me and him clearing the air was one of the things that said, I'm going to clear the air with Dewberry. Because if I can clear the air with an Armenian or a Mexican, I can it. clear it with a brother. And look, y'all, that's what we got to realize across the board. We got to get it. To, if we get on with anybody, we got to get on with us too, y'all. Right, oh, right. my mama, mom, I salute that. And and that's one of the things. Even you know, no, you know, shout out G Face, man. Yeah, shout because out G Face. I liked his get down. You know, I see him on other stuff, and he no nonsense. You know, he's like, man, we got a problem. Let's get down. Bump all his jaw jacket, and I respect the warrior spirit. He got a warrior spirit to me. You know what I'm saying? Even though you know our spirits were same directed toward each other, but. That's the thing. I respect that. Get out, homie. We ain't finna keep on passing no words. You don't like me. I don't like you. Let's fight. I can't take nothing from nobody. But me personally, because um, I know some do that really are with it. And then I know way more who are not with it do. So when people express their interests online, whether they really with it or not, I don't put that in the point category. Because you can never tell. Any, you know what? Anybody I kind of look at certain stuff. And I just, you know, I go off the cuff. I believe, I believe, I believe G-Face will fight. I'm not going to say he won't. Right. But just because the only way I can say that I know is because it's online, I can't say he will. No, I understand. Yeah, that's that's yeah. why I'm going, just going off a feeling. Yeah, I feel you. I, I feel can't you. say 100. Correct. Just my, my initial feeling, I believe he'll fight. Right. You no, know I what I'm saying? You. Come down to it, I believe he'll fight. No, I feel you. And I, I appreciate G-Face personally because we communicated personally and it was respect and cordial. That's why I was shocked to hear you say that certain things wasn't true. So Yeah. At least that's what came to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. That's and, what came to me. Man, and I, he ain't never did nothing to the homie. I'm like, for real? All right. Okay. We'll leave that at because I don't think right. that was really con conversation for online anyway. Right, yeah. So it, we, it should not have been because I had, I had even reached out to some old school white fences. Mm. And they was like, yeah, some stuff. That's the that's the only thing with G-Face. He's 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 verbally volatile. Mm. He get caught up in his emotions, and he just will. Where you learn to, you learn to talk like that, man? Verbally volatile. I like that, oh. man. <laughs> you done read a book or two or something, huh? Man, man, I, ain't, I ain't the sharpest knife in the drawer, homie. But I'm definitely ain't no spoke. You ain't the you dog. Know? I like that. That's right. Tell me this: You spent quite a bit of time. You grew up in as a Los Angeles native, but then you spent a lot of time in the South. You've done time in the California prison system as well in the Alabama. Um, prison system. Outside of the gangbang differences, I was in Alabama last year for a funeral. Different. Yeah, and I want to know your biggest difference, and I'm gonna give you my oh, takeaway. One, one of, okay, the politics we have in the California prison, they don't have in Alabama prison. Outside yeah. of okay, okay, they don't have that. Um, and Alabama prison is majority black. You know what I'm saying? When I first went to the prison, they didn't really even know what a Mexican was. Now, my that. crime partner, the homie No Good from Fodi Avalon, my crime partner, when we got popped, we was in the county jail in Birmingham, they put him down as white. He was like, what, man? He smell, I'm a Mexican. They were like, what? Mm. You know what I'm saying? He used to get mad about that. So, it, what, what none there. What it year? Was, what year is this? 96. Mm. So, um, boom, here it is. When we get to the system, it's, they system is 75% is black, 25% white. So now here it is, everybody black. So, you know, it ain't, you, and, and y'all, they buffaloing the white boys. They running clean over them. So ain't no outside opposition. You know, they don't do nothing, just get into it with each other. Whereas in California, you know, every race can do damage. Sturdy, yeah. So, you know, you had that and it was just a lot different. I, you know, I can tell you about my first day on the yard, man. I heard, 
I heard it do my very first day in the prison when I left receiving. Um, it was a homie named a uh, little kid from six old. Me and him went to elementary school. He was there, and a dude named L.A. from schoolyard was there. They was from the house, and they came, found me, and got me, and like, come on, man. They took me to the yard, and um, we walked through the gym. When we walked out on the yard, um, it was some dudes right there wrestling and playing. Mm. When I walked through the gym door and they went to playing, I dove on the ground and went to rolling. <laughs> so now everybody looking at me and I'm like, cuz, get back, get back, get back. They like, for what? They for the shoot. I said, they finna shoot them. <laughs> Who finna shoot them? <laughs> I said, the gun. The... With no tower. And this and this was in the most maximum security prison Alabama had. Not Levinston. No, no. Uh, this is called St. Clair. St. Clair, okay. They got the two main, the two main, they got three. They got St. Clair, West Jefferson, and Holman. Those are the okay. three max camps. In Alabama, period. In Alabama, okay. period. Well, you know, now they got one or two more, but at that time. I so, was in um, the Alabama system like 93, so I, I was, so I guess I picked the wrong name. It's a long time ago. Go ahead. Okay. So um, they was like, cuz ain't no gun towers here like that. Get up. This ain't Kelly. I'm like, for I get up, dust myself off. I'm like, for real? He like, yeah. So the dude, everybody looking at me like, who this big old fool rolling in the dirt? So they don't do yard down at all, ever? With, uh, under a gun? No. So they do have guns at some places. No, yeah, some places, but they got guns on way on the outer perimeter. Okay, You're not finna get shot, period. So the yard you know, don't go Alabama down like how our yard go down. Hey, no, oh, no, wow. no, 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 no. They don't do it. You can have you can have a, a hundred man ride. They're gonna let you fight till y'all tired and then come lock up whoever they're gonna lock up. Wow. Because nine times out of ten, it's gonna be black on black anyway. Mm. So anyway, when I got up off the ground, dust myself off with the homies like, cuz, man, you ain't in Kelly no more. I'm like, Dorothy, we are no longer in Kansas, you know? So anyway, walking, we after we walked the yard for about an hour. We come in going in the gym. Um, it was a black dude. He walked up to the white officer. He was a gym worker. And um, they was cleaning up the gym because they couldn't really shut the yard down. And uh, the black dude, he walked up to the white, the white boy officer, and he told me, he said, man, um, he said, man, I ain't finna be sweeping the whole gym by myself. Man, all them ends over there ain't doing nothing. But he used the whole word, N-I-G-G-E, no, N-I-G-G-A. He used it, talking to this white officer. And I looked, you could have knocked me down and knocked me down. I, I said, what? Nobody else reacted. No, it's normal. <laughs> So I looked at him, I said, cuz, y'all hear what this fool said? <laughs> he like, what'd he say? I said, man, he talking to the white boy, man, and use the N-word by some more blacks. He like, oh, two, hold on, we're gonna have to talk to you, man. We're gonna mm. have to. And I, I had to really get schooled, man. I was a culture shock. I was, mm. I really was in the twilight zone. I said, man, I am in the twilight zone, homie. Mm. And, it, and, it, and it threw me, and it's like, for instance, like I put a video up. They used to have, in Alabama prison, they have gay pageants on Friday. Huh? Yeah, well, all the all 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 the gay dudes dress out with the clothes. They got high heels. All inmate, or it's not like all inmates, it's, man. It's not the police and that. No, oh, it's okay. the inmates, man. Dudes I who see some videos like that online. Yeah, you you can go to mine. I got one up with wow. like dudes who might have uh boys. They call say you right. got boys. You got some boys. They just spent all their money all week going to, going to the dudes who know how to so good getting a little dresses made and a little skirts and a, the the shoes and all that. And then come Friday. The boys on the table dancing and spurling in circles and dudes throwing bags of coffee out on the floor. That's how you can tell who win, who got the most stuff. So tell me this. What is the level of participation and acceptance from the general population? Is this a niche thing for a few freaks or do the general everybody participate? Uh, generally, it's, 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 oh, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, it's the norm. So it's even if you're not into it, you laugh at it and have fun and have enjoy like or, how, how. or you just look at it and keep on moving because it's the norm. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about like if you if you indulge in and you got a and you got a boy, you can and, and this go for gang members too. If you playing the man role, you okay, you good, you cool. That's what I would. As long as you ain't playing the girl role, the, the, now the, the person who looks bad called. about it is the one playing the girl role. But the cold part about it, the dudes who who do got boys on them, some of them be stomped down killers. You know, they some do. crips, blood, disciples, vice versa, they be stomped down and will kill you dirt. That's the number one thing you gonna you gonna get killed in the Alabama prison about mm. that, the gay thing. Mess with one of their boys and see what happened to you. Mm. Then now here come the cell phones. The cell phones kind of like the number one thing now. And so when, when did you parole last? When I parole last, yeah, yeah. 2018. Oh, so you just you fresh home. Yeah. 
Damn, salute. OG, I didn't realize that. Oh, you can almost say 2019 because it was December. That's fresh. That's fresh. Yeah, yeah. so you saw cell phones, so you know about old juice, old school jelly, and you know about cell phone jelly. Oh, man, I had a, I had a, I had a cell phone since, uh, man, I'm full of, I had a cell phone since 2007. Mm, if damn. I didn't have a cell phone, something was wrong because I hey, let, let, let the police get mine. Right. Uh, uh, I come. come. I used to call certain parts of the prison, Walmart. I, I tell the homies, I'm like, cuz, I'm finna go shopping. I'm, police took my phone last night. I remember, I, I remember watching a video about you being in the gym in the pen and out of town niggas trying to, the, the, the Mickey charger. And they tried to hog the charger at the charger yeah, space. I was that case that you day. tried to go for that with Heidi. You like, buddy. Yeah, I, was, I didn't like him anyway. I didn't like him anyway because he's a rat, man. Uh, right. He ain't gonna tell me I can't. The police, you know, they call them slabs, long charges, about eight, nine on the. Mm. Got it while I was going to work. Mm. So when I came back, the homie like, "Cub, man, they took, the, they took, the, they took the slab. They took both slabs. Now the only open charging spot is up under the water faucet. You got like three little things you can plug in. But the Muslims, that's theirs. They own that. Mm. So I'm telling the homie, and at the time I wasn't feeling the Muslims. I didn't like them because they was running around like a gang. So I told the homie, I said, "Cub, we gonna get into it with them before it's over." You like you? I said, "Cub, I, I pretty much, yeah, we gonna do it because I'm gonna push it. Right. I don't like you." Right. So um, he lied. So when I came back from work that day, the homie told, I said, "Cub, I'm finna go up under that sink." He like, "Man, two hundred cub bump that." You know what I'm saying? I can get on the phone, and this was like 2013 or 14 at the mm -hmm. time. So I go to I go stand by the thing. I'm waiting for somebody to come off. I'm finna put my phone on there. I'm like, ain't nobody in their mom gonna tell me I can't charge my phone. Mm -hmm. So when I go to do it, the same one I don't like, he come to Muhammad or whatever his name was. Ho 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 ho. I said, ho ho what? <laughs> uh man, you know my people, man. I said, homie, man, look, I'm finna charge my phone up, Holmes. Man, woo 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 woo. So I'm like, boom. So he had a partner. I, I'm gonna say his name, Big Saint. Big Saint, like, hold on to him, because he know where it's finna go. He say, when I come off, you can go on. It's cool. I, said, I looked at him, I'm like, now me and Saint was all right. I said, all right, homie. So I, instead of me walking away, man, just walking away, I couldn't hold it in. I said, man, I said, man, you need to talk to that rat fool right there. Mm. And the fool gonna say, you a rat. Oh. That's a killing offense to me. Mm -hmm. What? I tried to get him, I tried to bomb on him over the homie's shoulder and he moving around. I said, hold, hold. I said, you know what? I said, hold on, I said, this ain't no fight. No, this ain't no fight. I said, what you just said out your mouth, this ain't no fight no more. I already don't like you. Man, I ran back to the bunk. That where my, where my knife was, it wasn't there. One of the homies, a homie, um, a homie from Playboy Gangsters out of Montgomery, had got my knife because he was going to the yard. I'm like, dang, where my knife at? So another homie out of Montgomery, little crib dude out of Montgomery, he's six. So I said, "Cause you got your knife on?" He like, "Yeah." I said, "Me give me that knife. Give me that knife." <laughs> so when he handed it to me, when I run back around there, they knew I was coming to stab him. They hid him. He was about four beds down, mm. up under the bed. They pulled the sheet down on the side, <laughs> and I'm looking for him. I'm like, "Cuz, where he at?" They done went and got your police, man. Y'all better, better come on in. So I'm, I said, cut where y'all homie at, man? Where he at? I already, I'd seen already where I wanted to stab him in his left eye right there. I'd already, <laughs> I'd already zeroed in. I'd already like, I'm like, I'm gonna stab him in his eye Everything right there. Everything to the left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, here come the police. I passed the knife off. They're like, come on to him, come on. Cause I wreaked havoc in that system. I can mm -hmm. tell you about that. But anyway, come on to him. I'm like, what's up, man? They took him to the ship office. The little female sergeant, me and her was kind of cool. I was, you, you and I, I said, I ain't doing nothing. It's, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. You promise? I, yeah, I promise you. It ain't nothing gonna happen. She said, oh, I'm gonna let you go back now. Don't do nothing. I said, all right. I couldn't wait to get back. You gonna call me a rat, man? I'm finna, I'm finna send you to your mama, homie. I'm finna pin you to the wall like a Malcolm X poster. So when I got back up in there, the police would walk with me. Uh, said he knew me. He, he break off and go to this block. I said, well, he said, Tune, I ain't going back up there, fool. I know what you finna do. I know, we know you, you. We know what you finna do. He said, I don't feel like doing no paperwork. I'm going to go home when, when my mm -hmm. shit be in. I'm like, all right, you know, basically, yeah, 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 you know. Right. Man, when I got up, I called the homies. Cause y'all circle up, homie. It, 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 I told you we going to get into it with him. Now I'm finna make it. Mm -hmm. So when I when the homies got up in there, they're like, cuz, what's up? I said, man, we finna get them fools, cuz. So we had to bed. So they sent two of their people over there to me. Now they wanna they wanna make friends. They wanna be cool. I don't wanna be cool now. Your homie right. called me something right. that where I'm from, it don't go. Right. So man, they man, they got to the point they wanted to buy me a phone, give me my own charge. No, no, no. So then I had other homies that I was cool with, like two cuz, man, woo, woo, woo. I'm like, man, I said, I tell you what. I said, I tell you what, this how it's gonna go. Go get one of your homies, go get one of y'all. I said, I gotta fight me somebody. I said, we gonna fight at least. I gotta fight. I said, go get him. He didn't want to fight me. Of course, he was a little smaller than me, and I can understand that. I said, I'll tell you what, we'll give him a knife and give me a knife, and we'll do it like that. He didn't want to do that. Of course, he knew he knew he was going to die that day. Right. I said, man, look, I said, well, somebody got to fight him. 
Go, oh, man, y'all got some big ones over there. Man, go get one of them. We gonna do something. So they found one. They found him a crash chest dummy. Dude, I, the dude slept about four beds. Now, I didn't like him anyway. I already told the homie, I said, I'm gonna stab him first chance I get. I didn't like him anyway, neither. So he was the one gonna do it. I said, oh, that's cool. That's perfect. I don't like you anyway. So they go to the one time and tell the one time, hey, man, look, they gonna get down. It ain't gonna be nothing else, but we gotta get down or it's gonna turn into something else. So the police, you know, it's black police. It's right. black state. So ramp. the police wanna see it anyway. Oh, big tune and a big bear. Mm. Yeah. Man, look, they cleared the whole little day room out, mopped the floor, <laughs> get your little squeak <laughs> on your shoes. Shit. I go on in. I don't got no but some drawers and some and some uh, and some tennis shoes. So um, he finally came on in and we locked up. He he, he, he was an iron dog at the time. I wasn't on iron no more. A big old strong fool. We locking up. We locking. But he kept grabbing me. I don't grab. I'm from Cali. We don't grab. We fight. But he kept grabbing me. They love to wrestle. And this big old fool was strong. I ain't gonna even lie, homie. This fool grabbed me and kind of shook me this and that. In the back of my mind, I'm like, oh, Toon. Oh, you better pick the pace up. You might have bit off some here. You know what I'm saying? Man, that fool shook me and throw me up against the bench. When my back hit the bench, the only reason why he didn't throw me to the floor is because the benches, when they moved Same. all the benches up, my bench, my back hit the bench. But he grabbed me and ran me up against the wall. So I'm up against the wall and I'm doing this. Boom, boom, boom. That ain't phasing the big rocky right. head fool. Right. So I tell him, I say, man, let me go. I said, I ain't doing all this grabbing. Let me go, homie. Let me go. <gasps> I said, let me go. I said, I'm telling you, just let me go. We're going to do it all over. You all right? Man, as soon as that fool let me go, I fired real quick. Bam! When I fired, he rushed me again. We locking up. When he grabbed me the second time, he would not let me go for nothing. No dummy. So his one of his people in there, one of the homies in there, and I, I'm like, cuz, man, look, that's it, man. This fool ain't going to let me go, homie. He ain't, he ain't going to let me go. Fool so me. So we got through that, and they, and they transferred me. The goon squad hit. The, the two days later. Fool me once. That's on me. Fool me twice. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, he ain't gonna let you get him twice. This, uh, two, but he was a boss rat and he got me shipped. The goon squad hit, they had us all on our bed. They searched us down. So when they towed the whole dorm up, they came to my bed and tapped me. Said my name. I'm like, yeah. Like, get up, pack up. I'm like, what? Mm. Pack up. Psh, man, I was on the first thing smoking up out of there to another prison. I'm they like, oh, well, thought it was gonna be me. another wave. Uh, dude, dude, he thought I was gonna get him. Mm -hmm. And probably, you know, the way my mind was, I probably would have looked at him one day and like, man, you called me, you called me out, man, I'm, I'm gonna get you anyway. And probably that probably what would have happened. Right. So you know, he got rid of me. Well, no, you know that was that was get at one time. You know, they finished sending me to the feds. From there. From there, you know, because uh, before I you before you before you get activity. started before you get started, I couldn't find a better way to finish this session than to sit here in person and actually experience a tomb story like the foundation they should get it because <laughs> yeah. that's how you started this shit that's how i fell in love with your content by you just telling the stories and then i reached our time limit and i was able to i felt like i was watching you on youtube but getting it in real time right there, man. From I, horse's mouth. <laughs> yeah man I, i'm really proud of you i appreciate you man i have it's like my first um, episode for the year and me and Alex hadn't even got active yet. Mm -hmm. and I I had to push the line because you came through. And I appreciate you making facts with feelings a priority, cuz. Yeah. And um, I see big things for you, man. You're inspirational for a lot of people who come from where we come from and don't have a lot of tangible tools and can show, like, even after it seemed like your life was buried and threw away, you still coming out shining like new money, man. And I, Proud of you, happy for you. You welcome back anytime you want to come through and get something off your chest. Anything you want to, that's your camera. Anything you want to tell the people before we get up out of here, it's on you. What's up, what's up, what's up, man? For all those who want to catch me on YouTube, man, my YouTube channel is Cartoon 53. Just run it all in together, and, I, and I'm there, man. Shout out to the Foundation Nation, man. Hey, I love y'all, man. Y'all represent me, y'all protect me. I like how when somebody get on my head on that YouTube, y'all come to my rescue, man. <laughs> Uh, my IG is D A D is in dog D A dot O V A dot L O R D the Overlord. Peace, peace. East Side Facts Over Feelings podcast. It's a wrap.